Hey everyone, thanks for being here today. This video is gonna be a little bit of an overview of the House of Milano Fragrance. They were one of my favorite discoveries from last year, and I've been making my way through the discovery set. There are eight fragrances in total, so if you're curious to hear my thoughts on this house, stay tuned. So Milano Fragrance was actually created by the masterminds behind Mask Milano. And the concept behind this line is a way to celebrate different areas of Milan as a city historically. They wanted these fragrances to evoke the spirit of the place, the spirit of the city. And the collection was actually created in 2020, but because of COVID and everything, they had to delay their launch until last year. So they didn't actually release the line until 2021. The noses behind all eight of these fragrances are all women, which I found really cool. And all of these fragrances include specifically Italian raw materials. So I got the Discovery set as a gift last year and it comes in a little box like this, very elegant with a very elegant ribbon and it slides out and you have this little booklet that gives you the notes and the story behind each fragrance. And then here are all of the fragrances. I found this presentation to be super elegant. So in the little booklet, the inspiration behind the brand says, if you believe that even unanimated things can have a memory, then this must be the spirit of Milan. And the bottles look like this. And these are the fragrances. So I'm gonna go through these fragrances in no particular order, except that I'm gonna save my favorite two for last. Why don't we start with their two white floral fragrances? This first one is called Cortile or Cortile, not quite sure. And the little tagline says, sensual and narcotic jasmine with a whiff of coffee. Cortile in Italian means courtyard and this fragrance, sorry, I'm trying. This fragrance is meant to showcase the feeling of being on a balcony in the summer and looking into the courtyard and the jasmines in bloom and people are brewing coffee in their stovetop mochas. It is a beautiful, super realistic jasmine, not indolic at all. You really get the greenery and the feeling of the stems. It is a narcotic summer evocation of flowers and sunshine. I have to admit, I don't get coffee. I really don't get the coffee note, but I do get a lot of really lush, sensual floral notes like ylang ylang, osmanthus, tuberose. It's just a really lush bouquet of florals. All of these fragrances are just so excellently constructed. The quality is so clear in the raw materials and in the way that they're blended. It's extremely sensual. And as it dries down, you start to get some of the resins and it gives it that little bit of depth. That resinous feel almost lends itself to a little bit of a smoky flare slightly. Maybe that's what they're meaning by a coffee note and it's a little bit abstract, but on the skin, it really, really blooms and leaves quite a nice trail. It really feels like a summer fling. It feels like romance blooming in the air. There's a little bit of mischief. It's quite a flirtatious, sensual scent. It's playful. It's not too serious, but it is very, very elegantly done. I really like this one. So that is Cortile or Cortile. Okay, the next white floral is called called La Prima, and the tagline says, a majestic profusion of sensual flowers and opulent fur. This one is about the opera. It's dedicated to that feeling of opulence, being dressed up and embodying the fullness of your elegance. This one is so nice. It is extremely luxurious. This is really about being dressed to the nines, fully embodying your feminine sensuality, knowing all eyes are on you, exuding confidence, and really owning your luxury and your opulent status. There's cardamom and bergamot, I think, in the top, giving it a little bit of spiciness. And then in the mid is jasmine, orange blossom, and osmanthus. This is the other end of the spectrum from 
Cortillo, where that one was flirtatious. This one is boss lady. The florals are so luxe and it's grounded by a base of bourbon, vanilla, and musk. And the musk note in here is quite, I don't wanna say fully animalic, but there are definitely animalic tones in there to evoke that feeling of wearing a worn fur coat. I almost think there's a whiff of having worn this fur coat around people who were smoking. It is old school elegance and opulence. This one is just absolutely stunning. I hate to use that word because I feel like it's so overused, but this really is this really is stunning. Something I have not experienced in quite this way before. When you wear it on the skin, those animalic musky notes do come out a little bit more than they do on paper, but it really is the kind of fragrance that asks you to step into the best version of yourself to wear it. You know what I mean? This is a special occasion fragrance to me, but because it feels so specific. While I love it, I don't think it will be a full bottle purchase just because I don't see myself embodying the necessary persona to pull this fragrance off very often. But this is absolutely gorgeous. That one is La Prima. The next one we have is Derby. And as the name suggests, it is meant to evoke the racetrack and it is a green aromatic fragrance. It is a blast of these beautiful aromatics at the top. There's galbanum, there's violet leaf and lavender, and something else I can't remember right now, but it's beautifully aromatic at the top. So refreshing and fresh, sharp and awakening. In the middle, there's tuberose and mimosa and ylang ylang, and the base notes are vetiver, oak moss, patchouli, and sandalwood. It is a really super refreshing, slightly masculine leaning due to the aromatics, but you really get that grass and the feeling of earthiness. And there is even something in those florals that give it an evocation of being in the sun. I really love that violet leaf accord. As it dries down, it does give a little bit more of an aquatic feel and even on the skin, that aspect of it really starts to come out more. It's a little more pronounced. It's very clean, it's very elegant, and it's green, aromatic, leaning, aquatic in the end. Really, really nice one. So that is Derby. The next one we have is Naviglio. And the little blurb says, a modern cologne with Marseille soap and aquatic notes. Naviglio means canal, and it's meant to evoke in olden times when people would take their laundry and clothing and wash it in the canal. This is just a beautiful soapy fragrance. Structurally well done, extremely well blended and smooth. If you are looking for a soap fragrance, this is it. It is so fresh, super clean. Yeah, there's really not that much more to say about it except that this is soap. <laughs> Mm. I don't think I will ever wear a scent like this, but it's really, really beautiful and elegantly done. So that is Naviglio. The next one we have is called Dierno. And I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing these. This one says a timeless fougere with a subtle hint of amaretto. Mm. These are all so good, you guys. They're just so beautifully constructed. So at the top we have amaretto and lavender. The amaretto is very lightly sweet. It's not syrupy at all. It really just lends somewhat of a powdery facet to the opening. The middle notes are sage and something called bourbon geranium. I'm not sure what that is. The base is white musk, cedar, and aquatic notes. And Diurno is dedicated to a place called Albergo Diurno, bathhouse, spa, barber shop. You could sort of access anything spa-like or hygiene related. So this definitely has aspects of that barber shop feel with a little bit of an added interest with the amaretto that almost gives it a little bit of a cherry leaning. This one's definitely unisex. It's really, really elegant. It makes me think of crisp white starched shirts, expensive shaving cream, and maybe sipping on a little amaretto amaretto while you're having your face shaved. Not that I've ever had my face shaved, but maybe you're a man who just got shaved and haircut and you got your clothes starched and ironed, but you're a tiny bit sweaty. Not in a body odor way, in a musky way. This is very, very, I keep just saying these are so elegant, but they are. They are quintessentially elegant, exceptionally well-made. I really love this one too. So that is Diurno. 
The next one we have here is called Brera. And it says a renaissance of rose, saffron, and patchouli. This is meant to represent the art gallery. And it is essentially a rose, saffron, patchouli fragrance. It's really nice. The scent profile is one that I'm sure most of us are really familiar with. It is reminiscent of Oud Satin Mood. Those kind of smoky, oudy, jammy rose patchoulis. But again, just so, so beautifully done. There's a little bit of spiciness in there that gives it more interest. It's saffron, chili pepper, a citrus, I want to say bergamot at the top. The middle notes are rose, bourbon, geranium, and jasmine. And the base notes are patchouli, vanilla, and labdanum. It's beautifully resinous. This saffron is giving it something of a suede or a leather kind of feel. Really beautiful. So again, not really a scent profile that's unique in this current marketplace, but beautifully done nonetheless. So that one is Brera. Okay, now we're coming to my final two fragrances, and these are my favorite from the line so far. The first one we're going to talk about is Galleria. And this one's actually my scent of the day. And it says, a soft leather cheered up by red fruits and coffee. So this one is meant to evoke the leather goods marketplace. And I'm just going to spray it again since it's my scent of the day. Oh my god. This is my leather iris dream come true. It's beautifully powdery. The leather is so realistic. It's like you're really inside a brand new supple leather bag. There's a violet leaf accord at the top, which I absolutely adore. And it's quite a pungent leather when it begins. It really smells like you stuck your head in a leather bag. I believe there's also coffee in the top notes, coffee, red fruits, citrus, and the middle notes of orris root, leather, orange leaf, and carrot seeds. I really love carrot seeds. It really gives that rooty, earthy, powdery smoothness. And then the base notes are patchouli, sandalwood, and amber. It is so, so, so smooth, beautifully rich. That orris is really, really buttery. It's buttery leather of the highest quality. It just smells expensive. Normally I hate to use that kind of terminology because I just find it a little bit inane to say that something smells expensive, but this really does. This smells like an expensive handbag. It is just unbelievably beautiful. If you're looking for a suede, buttery, iris, powdery, super well-constructed fragrance, Galleria is it. This is... This is a winner, you guys. And last but most certainly not least, we have Basilica. And it says, incense and candlelight adorned in aromatic freshness. And this one is dedicated to the Basilica di San Ambrogio, which is supposed to be the church that most locals prefer to the Duomo because it's less touristy and more intimate, sacred. If Galleria was the leather iris of my dreams, this is the incense of my dreams. It's got thyme and rosemary in the top, and the middle notes are incense, milk, labdanum, and the base notes are nagarmatha. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Virginia cedar and woody notes. It is just such a beautiful incense. And that milk accord gives it a creaminess and a smoothness and almost an etheric quality reminiscent of skin in a church. I know that sounds gross, but the collective people inside. This is so evocative, intimate. It really has a sense of the sacred. It feels quiet. It feels like you are confined within the walls and you are safe. You feel held. The coolness of the stones that surround you. You can almost hear the cavernous nature of the room that you're in. Hear the quietness of the footsteps. And while it does have aromatic aspects to it, it is that woody lactonicness that gives it so much character. By its nature, this one is perfectly unisex. My husband absolutely adores this one. 
one. He ran out and got another five mil sample for himself. Suffice it to say, I think that one will land in our collection very soon. But the milk notes and the labdanum give it this really full resinous feeling. You just feel so held and comforted by this fragrance. I do want to add the milk note does not make it lean or mond in any kind of way. It is just a very subtle lactonic quality. This one is my absolute favorite from the line. It is gorgeous. I wish I had an air freshener that smelled like this. I want this in soap and shower gel, pretty much everything. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Basilica. Guys, that's it. That's the whole line. I hope you guys found this useful or help you decide if you want to check out this line. Let me know if you have tried any of these fragrances. If there's any of these fragrances that you would like a more in-depth review of, do let me know that as well. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.